Today we're going to take a look at exactly what it takes to replace your OEM bumper cover with a custom aftermarket bumper cover like this one. The first step is to remove the front tires by jacking the vehicle up and using blocks, jack stands and so on to make sure it's safe to work around. Next we'll remove the fender liners to get to all the bolts that are holding the OEM bumper cover in place. And here's a shot of those fasteners after removing the fender liner. To get a good idea of what we're working with, here's a close-up shot of the original bumper and the aftermarket custom bumper. You can see there's quite a bit of difference, so we got some work to do cutting and carving to get this guy to fit. One other problem is the OEM bumper reinforcement runs right into this guy. So we're going to cut him away, cut it back a little bit, and then paint the bumper reinforcement flat black so you don't notice it. And here's a close-up shot of what we'll be cutting away. After trimming it to fit, we clamped it into place with this vice grips and we'll mark the holes that we need to drill in the flange from the inside of the fender. And here's a shot from the inside, we'll be marking that top one with a scribe. After you get the holes drilled in the right spot, you can make up a little bracket like this and that will fit back there to support it when we bolt it to the fender. Some tools that will help aggressively force the fiberglass panel to fit are various clamps that can pinch and hold the flanges together while you're drilling bolt holes and a heat gun which surprisingly can soften the material a bit so that it will stay or hold in the new position. At this point it's bolted into place but it's only temporary because we're going to remove it and we're going to fix up the front of this fender so that it's totally flat with some filler and we'll just have one nice line. Let me show you the bolts and the fasteners so you can get an idea of what it looks like on the inside. Here's a shot from inside of the fender and those new bolts are what's holding the flanges together. Here's a close-up shot from underneath. And finally one more shot of how the fiberglass flange bolts to the metal flange of the fender. If your custom bumper absolutely will not fit, sometimes you'll have to cut some relief slots, like the one you see right here cut in the flange, so that we could bend this a little bit to follow the fender shape. Now it did crack right here, but we're going to fix that with some fiberglass cloth. And here's a shot of the other side. On this side, it was solid fiberglass up here, so I used some lag bolts to go from the fender flange to here and also I cut a slot so that this would bend and it did crack but we're going to repair that also with some fiberglass. 
Another issue with the bumper is that there was a half inch to an inch gap back here and nothing here until you pushed on the bottom of the bumper that way. And in order to hold it in that position to close this gap, we had to make a bracket. And let me show you that bracket. Here's a close up shot of what that looks like. We also had to cut some reliefs underneath to get it to fit, but we'll be fixing that. This custom bumper for a 3000 GT was ordered from Car ID and was pretty rough and did take some effort to get it to bolt up, but it will work out. We do have a lot of filler work to take care of in some upcoming videos, but for now, I hope you enjoyed this part and it gives you a good idea of what it takes to replace an OEM bumper cover with a fiberglass custom one. If it did help you out in some way and you'd like to get my latest videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button.